Vitamin D deficiency is fairly common today. Over a billion people worldwide have low levels of vitamin D in their blood. Vitamin D deficiency has been linked to cancer, heart disease, osteoporosis, but never conclusively. It still confounds us, and yet this vitamin is part of the human genome. It seems that all our studying of vitamin D only raises more questions. The more we learn, the more we know that we don't know. This may be true, but a recent study has found a link between the active form of D and good gut bacteria that researchers feel may be the reason that it's been so difficult to pinpoint results and make conclusions about vitamin D. This could mean that we've been studying vitamin D in a completely wrong manner, and this could change how we approach its research. Before we get into this, if this is your first time here and you're interested in alternatives for good health and taking charge of your world as time moves us all forward, then we're glad you're here and consider subscribing so you won't miss anything. We have lots of videos on our channel about the great importance of gut health and how to improve it, plus ways to take control of your life and general health, so please subscribe and help us spread the word. We know that vitamin D is needed for a strong immune system and for keeping healthy bones and teeth. Past studies have shown us that low levels of vitamin D in the blood correlate with various illnesses, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, and diabetes. A few recent studies have even hinted that low vitamin D levels may be associated with severe cases of today's current virus pandemic, but that research is considered inconclusive. Despite this evidence and the large amount of clinical research, the belief in vitamin D supplementation still gets mixed reviews both from the public and from science. There have been various studies that counter these findings. For example, one study found no evidence that a vitamin D supplement prevented heart disease and cancer in older adults. Yet another study found zero evidence that taking a supplement improved bone health. Researchers on the pro-vitamin D side are baffled by these results, but the bottom line is that we don't really know for sure what it does or how much is needed for optimum health. There is no totally conclusive proof of a need for any vitamin D supplementation. However, scientists at the University of California, San Diego, La Jolla, have stumbled on a possible explanation for these conflicting findings. Their research suggests that gut bacteria plays a vital role in converting inactive vitamin D to its active, health-promoting form. Stored vitamin D versus active D. When medical researchers want to determine a person's vitamin D status, they measure the inactive precursor because this reflects how much vitamin D the body stores. However, we are now starting to think that the important factor to measure may be how much vitamin D is metabolized, not how much is stored. During their study, the UC San Diego researchers discovered that for older male patients, the amount of active vitamin D levels found correlated with the diversity of the community of bacteria living in their gut, or gut microbiome. The levels of active vitamin D correlated with the amount of good bacteria species that they had in their guts. On the other hand, there was no strong correlation between the inactive precursor form of the vitamin and bacterial diversity or good gut bacteria. A diversity of the gut microbiome is typically associated with good health in general. Getting D from sunlight. Even when factoring in possible diversifications in the study like age or where in the United States the subjects lived, their ethnic background and antibiotics used, the correlation between the microbiome diversity and active vitamin D stayed the same. This gives us new evidence and a doorway to understanding this vitamin and how important our gut bacteria really is for our health. In fact, with all the other variables the researchers studied, the correlation between the active vitamin D and the subject's microbiome diversity was by far the strongest factor patient after patient. This is even more remarkable given that some of the subjects lived in sunny environments like California and are more able to synthesize their own vitamin D through ultraviolet light on the skin. 
whereas others in the study lived across the country in places where they don't have this sunlight advantage. This evidence seems to say that it's not so much about how much vitamin D you get through sunlight or a supplement, but rather how much and how well your body can store it. What matters is how adept your body is at metabolizing vitamin D into its active form. Certainly this opens the door for many more studies focusing just on this one aspect. Researchers of this study speculate this could directly augment existing treatments for improving bone density and possibly other health outcomes. Osteoporosis. The research team analyzed stool and blood samples for almost 600 men who lived in six cities across the United States. They were all reported to be in good or excellent health and the average age of these participants was 84. Not only did the test participants who had the most active vitamin D in their blood have the most diverse species of bacteria in their system, they all had more of the friendly bacterial species that produce butyrate. Butyrate is something that science thinks is pretty special. It's a short chain fatty acid that certain types of bacteria make when they digest fiber and butyrate has a wide range of potential health benefits, making it a golden child of sort. It's been suggested that it can help prevent colon cancer, lower blood cholesterol, and even combat insulin resistance. There's been new research suggesting that fiber is more important than we long thought for long life, and that part of the reason why fiber may be so important is because it leads to your producing more butyric acid. We recently released a video about fiber and its newfound health benefits. You can watch after this. But which causes which? We don't know whether high levels of active vitamin D help butyrate producing bacteria to thrive or if these bacteria promote the conversion of vitamin D to its active form. The research could not prove that having a diverse gut microbiome meant more active vitamin D. It simply found a very strong association between the two. That's why this is exciting and why more research needs to be done on the relationship between these two elements. Another limitation of the study was that most of the participants were older white males and around 75% of them were taking some form of vitamin D supplement. Therefore, this study could not hold true for all populations nor for people not taking vitamin D supplements. Nonetheless, it's a breakthrough that must be recognized and embraced and it opens the door for more targeted research to further our understanding of vitamin D. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more health tips and ideas.